hello welcome back to sales world this week i have kind of like an idea that i want your thoughts on whether or not you think i should do it or not in video form i actually plan on doing the thing i'm going to talk about no matter what <laughs> but i had an idea instead of doing a wrap up which i was originally planning on doing i want to do something that i think i'm going to call a book bucket list and basically i'm going to just take the things from the books that i really loved like a few things from each book i read that month put it in my notion as part of my book bucket list and they will become things that I want to actually make real in my life that are inspired by the books I read. So let me know what you think of that in the comments. This is going to be the first video of that for January and I'm just really excited because I'm going to share with you some of my favorite moments that happened in the books that I read this January and those moments that I want to make real in my real life. Let's get into the books that I read for January. I read Two Twisted Crowns, which is the sequel to One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. I also read The Witch Collector by Clarissa Weeks. Carissa? Cr Clarissa. No, I don't know. I think it's Carissa Weeks. And then I also read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Leah Pardugo. I read like some poetry, but I'm not going to use nonfiction or poetry for this book bucket list. I'm going to stick with fiction. I find they inspire me so much more and open my mind up to be so much more imaginative. And so those are the four books that I read that are fictional for the month of January. And these are the things that I intend to put on my book bucket list from each of them. So I will say that Two Twisted Crowns had, I, I've already mentioned this before, I did a reading vlog on it, five stars for me. It had the most parts that I would want to put in my life. I'm trying to keep it very like, there's gonna be a lot of books this year and a lot of things that I wanna do. So I'm trying not to overwhelm myself and I'm trying to keep it small, but that one had a lot more than the others, I will say that. But for that one, I think, so I'm gonna say two that for this one are more so on the imaginative, possibly impossible side. We'll see. If you've read Two Twisted Crowns or One Dark Window, you know that they use Providence cards and that's like part of their magic system. And these cards are just like magical. They have different abilities, each one. But specifically, what I wrote for my list was that I would want to be able to use the mirror or the nightmare card. However, I do want to make kind of like a bit of a disclaimer on that. I don't know what you'd call it, but I <laughs> would only want to use them if I had someone's consent to use them and I wouldn't want to use them for harm. I think they could just possibly generate a lot of fun in your life. You had the ability to, with consent, be able to like mind speak in, essentially with the nightmare card and then also with the mirror card to be invisible would be very very cool in my opinion obviously those are along the lines of very impossible but i think i don't know i'm open to suggestions about how you think you could make this real because another one that i wrote was the ability to control trees and like shepherd trees is something that comes up in the books obviously i can't do that either but I was thinking something cool that I could do that I've never done is plant some trees or do something along that along those lines where I get to basically move a tree from a seedling to like a yard or something and watch it fully grow. I think that would be a way to make that real. So hopefully you guys are catching my drift. Some of the stuff that is very like fantasy, unrealistic, I'm going to try to find ways to make realistic. But there are other things that I can definitely make very real that are just real in general. But for the Providence cards, obviously being invisible and being able to mind speak. Um, if you have any ideas for those, let me know. I would love to hear them in the comments. The other two are a little more simple. One of them has come up in multiple books, but I noted it clearly in this book. I want to experience the feeling of someone saying, there you are and the girls who get it get it and i'm not going to further explain that one but yes in two twisted crowns that's on page 306 of the kindle edition yeah i am going to put that on my book bucket list i want to experience the feeling of someone saying there you are and unprovoked i don't want them to know that i want them to say that i just want it to naturally happen so that's something i will kind of have to leave to fate and then the one that i can make happen myself that i really really enjoyed in that book was the riding of horses, like bareback, it just seemed really wild and free when 
film in Ioni were riding the horses and I would really really like to experience that. I have ridden a horse before obviously with a saddle with a guide, very slow pace. I would like to experience a more adventurous version of that in this lifetime. So those were all the ones for Two Twisted Crowns. <laughs> I really really enjoyed that book. I would highly recommend it. To me this is a 5 out of 5 if you're looking for like a star rating. I would say there were many moments in this book I could have picked from to inspire magical things in my real life but yeah this one for me was just so so good and i would highly recommend it those were some of my favorite moments that i thought i could potentially try to make real and then i had read the witch collector so there weren't too many in this i mentioned in a separate video that this book kind of frustrated me a little bit however i think the reason it was frustrating me is because there are parts of the female main character that I don't really let myself experience and maybe that's why I didn't like her so much. So I did kind of write down that in a non-harmful way I can learn to be a little more reckless, take life less seriously. So seeing how I can play that into the rest of the year, just learning how to take everything less seriously. And then the other thing that I thought would be really fun is that in this book, their tattoo, their, <laughs> their magic is like almost like tattooed swirls on their skin. And it sounds beautiful, but I think what would be fun, I don't intend to get a tattoo, but I've never really had like a temporary like sleeve of a tattoo or anything like that. I think that could be really fun to try in the summer. So. I'm probably gonna write that on the list, just trying out like a really cool temporary tattoo or even something like experiencing henna, I think would remind me of that book and that would be pretty magical, I've never done either. So I think both of those could be really, really fun and really interesting as far as like a learning experience with the henna. And if it's a temporary tattoo, it just could be really interesting to see what I look like with tattoos. <clears throat> um. I don't know if I would recommend this book though. I found the characters kind of bland. The story, the world was beautiful. She builds a bit of, she builds a beautiful world. You know, there's not much of it. If I have time, I probably will continue the series. However, as of right now, I don't really have any interest in continuing the series. There just wasn't much in it for me where I was like, I need to know more. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that one. That's The Witch Collector by Carissa Weeks. And the last two were The Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I'm just gonna say quickly that I know this isn't a wrap up, it's a book bucket list. Leah kind of took part of my soul away <laughs> in that last book. I don't know what that was about, but yeah, I, I was a little bit crushed in the second book, I'm not gonna lie. Both books were amazing, I would highly recommend them. But as far as the book bucket list goes, something, this is so small, but I just love little moments like this in books. Anej's dad is noted to leave the mom's favorite flowers basically like all over the house for her to find. So like in cupboards and like cooking pots and like even in her closets with clothes. This is a more like love-ish inspired one, but it made me realize like on my bucket list, I want to be with someone like that. I want to in this lifetime be in a relationship with someone who knows my favorite flower and leaves it all over for me to find. And I want to reciprocate that too. I want it to be kind of like a, a I don't know what that's called. <laughs> anyway, I want it to be reciprocated. I want it to go both ways. Maybe it's their favorite flower and I do it for them, but hopefully it's something different that they enjoy. Uh, so that was the thing in Six of Crows that I actually, I know that's not very telling of the story because you think, oh, it's all about like heists and thieving and whatnot. There are some really, really lovely components to this book. If you love like the little things, especially, oh, this book is just so good. I don't, the only other thing in this book was I really love the inner circle. However, I already have a really beautiful inner circle. I have amazing friends and family and I'm very, very grateful for them. The only thing I could think of is maybe if I could expand it or have my friends come visit me in Portugal, that would be amazing. That has nothing to really do with the book, but Expanding it possibly could. That seemed to be kind of what happened in Six of Crows is a slight expansion. So maybe expanding, expanding my friend circle as well. And then for Crooked Kingdom, this one, I want to explicitly state that I am not saying this because I have experienced anything like what Kaz or Anej has experienced. They are, they have 
much more real trauma in my opinion. I'm not traumatized by any means, but something that really inspired me about this book is that I do want to become more comfortable with physical touch. So this is probably the biggest out of all of them and I think could possibly be the hardest for me to do as of right now. I don't have their like intense traumatic experiences. However, it is something that I know I've wanted to work on for a long time and if these characters can do this with their experiences, I know that I can figure this out and I can do this and it is something that I genuinely want is to just become more comfortable with that. So I would say I highly recommend these books. This is my bucket list so far. I am going to show you guys too how I'm going to put this into Notion. But yeah, I'm very, very excited for this. Let me know what you think of this concept. If you have things in books that you wish were real in real life, and maybe we can talk about how you could make them real. But yeah, I'm very, very excited for this. I think it could be really fun. Probably gonna do this no matter what. I mean, the book bucket list part, no matter what, but the videos just because I think, I don't know. I just like the idea of bringing the books to life because there's so much in them that is so inspiring. I just don't want it to just be left in the book, you know? I want it to be shared. If you have any experiences that you want to talk about from books in the comments, let me know. And also, if you can think of a way to help me live my dream of being invisible and mind speaking, I would also like to know the answer to that. <laughs> so. You can kind of toggle between gallery view and table view. I have the gallery view so you can see like a picture for more inspiration. And then if you open the picture, it'll have all the same details as in the table. But what I like about the table is I can check off, <laughs> I can check off if I did it. And then I can put all the details of what happened and how the experience was in here, like a journal. And then I have like January, February, March, April, May, the whole year. But yeah, so far we're just in January and these are the books I read. And I'll probably duplicate this because I had more than one for two Twisted Crowns. And yeah, this is something I can refer back to at any time. And I'll show you the final look of all of them in here. Okay, so it ends up looking like this. This is for the month of January for the books that I read. These are like the images I chose with them, so it's kind of like a gallery. The biggest thing is there's no timeline on this. This is very much for fun to expand my imagination of what's possible to do in my life and just to see all that I can do. I would love to do all of these things before I die. And yeah, this is just to really inspire me to dream bigger and to have more fun. So yeah, this is what the January book bucket list looks like in my notion. It has the book that it's from, the image, and then if you click on it, it will open up to like the thing and then if you did do it all the details once you have done it and then still here in the table view you can look at it like this this is january you can collapse this this is the book bucket list so far for 2024. i hope you guys have a good week and i'll talk to you next week